an important announcement from Harrisburg School District's acting superintendent, Chris Selmer. Good afternoon, Harrisburg students and families. This is Chris Selmer, acting superintendent of the Harrisburg School District. And I thank you in advance for joining me this afternoon for a presentation on our return to school plans for the 2021 school year. As you can imagine, this has been a very difficult process in determining what is the best way to begin the 2021 school year. Certainly, the events of the past seven to 10 days uh, with COVID-19 and the spike in cases certainly has not helped the situation and providing reassurance of learning in a brick and mortar setting. I'm going to take about 20 minutes and walk you through a presentation which will give you background details and it will ultimately lead to what our plan is for the 2021 school year. So learning options for the start of the 2021 school year. What have we been doing since March of 2020? We have had an incident command team in place since the pandemic began. In June of 2020, we had a pandemic committee which was formed to work on school planning. This is in coordination with our incident command team. Again, that was formed in March of 2020. The draft of the health and safety plan is complete and will be up for board approval on August 10th, 2020. The district is updating its continuity of education plan for the 2021 school year. And we have been consulting with Mass Insight on our return to school planning. We have ordered supplies such as hand sanitizer, face shields, office shields, and also masks for those who may forget them when they come into the office. The district has done physical capacity studies to show the impact of six feet of social distancing in classrooms. The district has launched its Harrisburg Virtual Learning Academy program. The district has participated in state and local calls with school districts as part of our decision-making process. The district has ordered over 1,500 additional technology devices for the start of the 2021 school year. We have conducted two surveys this summer seeking stakeholder input. The data interestingly showed that only 18% were comfortable sending their child back to an in-person instruction school model. The data showed close to 40% were interested in a 100% online cyber model. The respondents also identified that our youngest learners and our special education students should be given priority with any planning to return to an in-person instruction model. And here's an example of one of the survey questions that we provided, and you'll see the responses. Uh, as I just mentioned, you'll see pre-K to five, and those children with special needs, based on the respondents, uh, those, re those surveys were done in both English and Spanish, and you'll see consistency amongst uh, the respondents prioritizing pre-K to five and our students with special needs as the first to return to an in-person brick and mortar instruction model. What other decision-making factors? Governmental agencies are publishing conflicting guidance around mass, social distancing, et cetera, making planning even more difficult. Concerns over the coordination of contact tracing protocols, availability of testing, and testing turnaround times is a great concern. COVID-19 symptoms have expanded beyond just a cough and fever, making it more difficult to identify someone that may have COVID-19. Travel restrictions recommendations were issued this month. Guidance from the federal, state, and local levels continue to change and evolve. And Dauphin County, particularly the city of Harrisburg, has been impacted negatively and disproportionately by COVID-19. In March of 2020, the state legislature passed Act 13 which relieves school districts of the obligation to provide 180 days of instruction and 900 and, or 990 hours of instruction. In June of 2020, the state legislature did not adopt Act 13 language for the 2021 school year, making it nearly impossible to offer hybrid learning options. On July 7th of 2020, the Pennsylvania Department of Education posted an emergency provision making hybrid in-person instruction an option for school districts for the 2021 school year. 
On July 16, 2020, which was just two weeks ago, PD issued operational guidance on reopening of schools. The PD guidance specifically calls for masks, six feet of social distancing in classrooms, distancing on school vehicles, which will reduce capacity on our buses and in our classrooms by approximately 50%. The Pennsylvania State Education Association has noted their concerns about returning to in-person instruction. Given all the aforementioned factors, the school district is going to offer two learning pathways for the 2021 school year. And I want to note, this is all subject to change based on the state guidance and COVID-19 spread. This is an extremely fluid situation and the guidance and planning could change really at a moment's notice. So option A that the school district is going to offer to our families and the Harrisburg School District is a pathway to classroom instruction. So what does this pathway entail? It entails three phases. The first phase is a blend of synchronous and asynchronous learning, which will be a 100% online start for all students in the Harrisburg School District. Phase two is a transition to a hybrid in-person learning model, which provides two days of in-person instruction and three days of remote instruction. And then phase three is a full return to brick and mortar in-person learning when spread dramatically reduces, proactive testing is available, and when treatments and or vaccines are readily available to the community. What is synchronous and asynchronous instruction, as I just mentioned in the previous slide? Synchronous instruction is students and teachers working together and interacting in a digital space concurrently at the same time. Asynchronous instruction is teachers posting direct instruction videos, clips, assignments, and other learning materials online. Students engage with the class materials, complete their work at their own pace, and with, generally within a one week interval, and they receive feedback from their teacher on that work. Again, option A, phase one, pathway to classroom instruction. As I mentioned, all students will begin the school year online 100% with remote learning, being taught by the Harrisburg School District teachers. A mix of 100% remote learning and paper learning materials will be available to students. Regular attendance will be taken by teachers and virtual days attended and hours do count for the 2021 school year. If the spread of the virus does not lead to a state shutdown, teachers will be delivering virtual instruction from their classrooms, which is different than what occurred last spring when schools shut down in March of 2020. A schedule of learning will be followed and strictly adhered to during remote learning. Additional device distributions will be announced to the community. Special education, English language learners, and social emotional support services will be provided. A presentation with additional information on each service will be shared in August. Food distribution, our grab and go pickup, will be provided during this time if approved by the Pennsylvania Department of Education, PD. Free drive up Wi Fi will be available during the school day on district parking lots. Security staff will monitor each parking lot to ensure the safety of all users. Free Wi Fi spots can be found throughout the city using this link, www.wifimap.io. And the district is exploring additional Wi-Fi support options for our families. And I hope to have more information regarding this possible program within the next two to three weeks. The hybrid learning schedule would be phase two of our pathway to classroom instruction. The hybrid learning schedule will organize students into two groupings, a group A and a group B. Group A will come to school on a Monday and Tuesday. Group A students work remotely on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Group B students will work remotely on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and come to school then on a Thursday and Friday. And again, this would be our, this is our pathway to instruction phase two. And we would implement this phase 
once we feel it's safe to start bringing students back into our buildings. And I'll discuss the factors we're gonna be looking for to make that decision in a few minutes. Option A, phase two, pathway to classroom instruction. The hybrid learning schedule will be launched using a phased in approach. The return of our youngest learners and special education students will be a priority, which matches the survey data we receive from our families. An example of a phased in hybrid return approach, and again, this is just an example. Step one could be we return all of our special needs students on a hybrid learning schedule to classrooms. Step two, which would happen probably within one to two weeks of step one, is we would return all of our K to four students on a hybrid learning schedule back to buildings. Step three, we could return all our five to eight and nine to 12 students on the hybrid learning schedule. Again, that would probably happen one to two weeks following the implementation of step two of this phased in approach. Again, this is just an example. I'm not saying this is the phased in approach we would use, but I wanted to share an example of what one could look like. Under this model, Wednesday will be a deep cleaning day between group A and B, and then Friday after school into the evenings will be a deep sanitation cleaning day for all our locations. Under our option A, phase two pathway to classroom instruction, instruction, symptom screenings must be done at home before the student enters the bus or building. If your child is running a fever, please do not send them to school. Students will eat breakfast and lunch in their classroom under this model. Students will be six feet apart, both in classrooms and in hallways. New bathroom tracking procedures will be implemented. Students must wear masks on the bus and in school. The district will evaluate beginning a hybrid learning schedule several times per month. So even though we're starting 100% online, I'm not committing and providing a date that will be online for X amount of time. For example, Philadelphia has just announced they will be online through November. What I'm saying is we're gonna to continue to monitor the situation because if for some reasons things turn the corner quickly and cases start to come down and some of the metrics we're looking at start to be met and we have the ability to start bringing some students back sooner we want to do that as a school district. So I am not committing and saying we're gonna be online for the entire fall into the winter. I'm saying we're gonna to continue to monitor this on an ongoing basis. Once we're ready to implement phase two and start to bring students back into a hybrid learning schedule, you will be notified at least two weeks in advance of us starting such schedule. Local and state health data will drive the decision of when to begin a phase in of in-person instruction under our hybrid schedule. No outside visitors may enter school buildings without an appointment, both in phase one and two. This applies. Meetings will be done virtually whenever possible. Pathway to classroom instruction. Hybrid learning model will be considered when. These are the factors that we're looking for and that we're monitoring to say it would be safe to move from phase one, 100% online, to phase two, a hybrid learning model. We are looking for a sustained decrease in community spread. Daily positive cases, case counts are reduced for a two week period. Testing turnaround times are reduced to five to seven days. Currently in many cases, there are much more than five to seven days. Positive case rates in the community are reduced for a two week period. Families must be comfortable with our health and safety plan that will publish on August 10th. Final determinations on the implementation of phase two will be in consultation with state and local health professionals. Option A, phase three which is a full return to regularly scheduled classroom instruction, what I'm calling pre-COVID-19 instruction. What are we looking for to get to phase three of option A? Contact tracing must be fully coordinated. Proactive local testing is readily available. Testing turnaround times are reduced from two to, to two to five days. 
Positive case rates in the community are below a defined threshold for a two-week period. The current state benchmark you hear often is 5% positivity rate in any community. We're looking for sustained uh, threshold that would be well below that 5%. Reliable treatments are available and or a vaccination is available for the community at large to dramatically reduce the risk of extreme illness or life-threatening conditions. Again, final determinations will be made in consultation with state and local health officials. So that was option A, which again is our pathway to classroom instruction. Option B is our pathway to 100% virtual online schooling, which is our HVLA, our Harrisburg Virtual Learning Academy. So as a parent, how do you determine whether you want to be an option A or do you want to be an option B? This is the consideration I would offer to you for option B. If you're a parent and you're not interested in sending your child back to brick and mortar until a treatment and or vaccine is available, then I would strongly consider the Harrisburg Virtual Learning Academy as your option for your student. If you need a fully asynchronous model of instruction, meaning all learning is done at a flexible time of the day to meet your family schedule, I would strongly consider Harrisburg Virtual Learning Academy, HVLA. If you are a current cyber charter or charter school student enrolled in an outside placement, such as Agora, CCA, Commonwealth, et cetera, you can enroll in Harrisburg Virtual Learning Academy. If you're currently enrolled in another cyber charter, you can move to the Harrisburg Virtual Learning Academy. You can move to the Harrisburg School District at any point in time. You cannot be held to any placement that is illegal and it cannot be done. So I just want to share that information and make sure our families clearly understand that. What we're asking from a commitment perspective for Harrisburg Virtual Learning Academy is that you must be enrolled in the program for a full semester, which would be through January 2021, if you choose this option. We're asking this for consistency purposes as we plan, obviously there's much planning that will need to be done with option A. So we're looking for consistency uh, with our student numbers and in which pathway that they're, they're, you know, they have chosen and that they're in. The Harrisburg Virtual Learning Academy, the teachers will be from the Montgomery Virtual Program, which has been a very successful online program uh, that's been offered for a number of years. But our program will have a local flavor to it. It's gonna have local involvement with our Harrisburg School District teachers and school district staff for support. The ultimate goal is, is in the school year 21-22, is that our Harrisburg School District teachers will be teaching our HVLA program as well. If there are other reasons an online model of learning is better for a student or family, then I would consider Harrisburg Virtual Learning Academy. To learn more about HVLA, you can go to the website, which is hvla.us, or you can call 717-703-4364, and you'll notice on the website that there's information available in English and Spanish, you're also going to see in the next week or two uh, information around the community regarding the Harrisburg Virtual Learning Academy and how you can sign up. So I know this will leave many questions and I'm going to try to address what I anticipate will be a few of them this, evening, this afternoon. How will this option differ from the learning that was provided at the end of the 1920 school year when the pandemic hit? For the 2021 school year, we are going to have streamlined platforms that include digital and printed materials of OpenCore, Eureka, Science Fusion, which are all curriculums that are in our brick and mortar school setting, as well as the support of Edgenuity. Edgenuity will be the platform for both our pathway option A or our option B, which is fully online. Chromebooks and our laptops will be available for all students. If you recall, we were doing phased rollouts as we were purchasing uh, devices through the spring. If you recall, we received a grant which helped support uh, us being able to implement a device distribution 
uh, throughout uh, April and May. So we're at the point where we're essentially a one-to-one -one device district if we need to be uh, here in Harrisburg. The district will provide technology support for families, direct instruction and video lessons taught by Harrisburg School District teachers from the classroom. Again, this is option A. This is the pathway to classroom instruction. And that, this is how it will differ from what you experienced in the spring. There's gonna be increased accountability for staff and students. There's gonna be robust professional development before online instruction begins. As long as the state is not shut down, meaning a code red, all teachers will be expected to deliver virtual instruction from their classrooms. Enhanced student support services will be available. Student attendance and accountability will be measured. Again, there is no Act 13 waiver as was given in 1920. So we must track days, we must track hours, we must track attendance. Student grading is going to be done as if it was in-person instruction. And our 2021 Continuity of Education Plan has transitioned from planned enrichment, which was last spring, to planned instruction. And I hope you see some of the differences as, the, as far as the structure that we're looking to bring with our 100% online start to the 2021 school year. Question, what is the new bell time schedule? So we are going to implement a new bell time schedule when our in-person instruction begins. The schedule is as follows. Our high school students would start at 7.30, conclude at 2.30. Middle school would start at 8.10, conclude at 3.10. And then elementary would start at 8.50 and conclude at 3.50. The new bell schedule supports safe walking corridor initiatives that we've been working on. It also uh, levels out the number of students uh, exit, entering and exiting buildings at any one time. As for those families that live in the Melrose, Scott, Roland Corridor, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And this is something actually at community meetings we discussed last year, and I made a promise to you that we would look at this, we would evaluate this and come up with an option for this school year. So this, this bell time schedule is not just about COVID-19, it's about some of the logistical challenges we had pre-COVID-19. This also provides greater flexibility with our transportation system, which must operate now with reduced seating capacity. Our transportation system was already taxed as far as the number of runs, number of drivers, et cetera. The fact that we have to reduce capacity puts more pressure on the system. This three-tier schedule should help us alleviate some of that pressure. Other updates. We are going to be issuing survey number three next week to families. This survey is going to ask you to select one of the learning options that's been presented today. Again, option A is a pathway to classroom instruction. Again, we start 100% online, but under this pathway, when safe and when we make the decision to do so, we would move into a hybrid learning model and then to a full brick and mortar learning model pre COVID. Option B is a pathway to 100% online. And if you recall, if you're a parent that has concerns about going back to brick and mortar until there's a vaccine, until there's readily available treatments, then option B is an option I would strongly encourage you to consider. If you can't respond to the survey, you can email your selection to the COVID-19 at hbgsd.us email box or you can call 717-703-4000. If you email or call, please leave a message with your name, student's name, grade, return phone number, and the learning option selected for each student if you have multiple students in our district. The school district will assume option A for your student for planning purposes if a choice is not selected by you. So again, the default option if we do not hear, uh, or if a parent does not make a selection, will be option A, pathway to classroom instruction. Other updates, PIAA athletics. PIAA is a separate entity that is not governed by the PA Department of Education or state legislature. On July 29th, 2020, the PIAA reiterated their decision to not postpone fall athletics. 
which will now put a decision uh, in the hands of the school districts as far as what to do with fall athletics. What I'm going to do over the next week is contact other schools who have also announced remote learning plans for the 2021 school year. I want to collaborate and have discussions with them on what they're thinking regarding athletics. I will announce a recommendation update on fall sports by August 7th, 2020, which is next Friday. Due to recent spikes in cases, all voluntary workouts that we've been doing over the summer have been postponed through August 7th, 2020. And again, this is due, this is a proactive measure due to the spikes in cases we've seen over the past seven to 10 days. Next steps, receiver approvals at the August 10th, 2020 board meeting. So we need the request to receiver approves the district's health and safety governance plan. We need the request to receiver approves, approves the updated continuity of education plan, which will start the school year again, 100% online for all students with two pathways to choose from, option A, option B. Request the receiver approves emergency waiver from the PA Department of Education, which will allow virtual and hybrid options for instructional delivery for the 2021 school year. Additional communication moving forward. In August, you can expect communication regarding additional device distributions and community food distributions if approved by PDE. We'll communicate specific programming supports around English language learning, special education, and social emotional learning. We're gonna encourage you to download the new Harrisburg School District communication app, which is available or will be available uh, we believe by the end of the, this week uh, on the App Store. And this, this app will allow us to send alerts, send information directly to your device. And all you have to do is download the app. It's free to download and allow us to communicate with you directly through your device. All updates will also be posted on the website and through social media outlets as our normal policies and procedures. Please stay tuned for new information as this situation remains fluid and ever changing. September communication. We'll be releasing updates throughout the month informing family of any changes to instructional delivery plan. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we are gonna continually monitor the situation within the city of Harrisburg surrounding the impact of COVID. Community initiatives to support literacy will be announced. We are in conversations uh, with local leaders regarding initiatives around literacy and supports for our students and families during what we know is an extremely difficult time. And again, I reiterate, please stay tuned for new information as this situation again is fluid and ever changing. Please join us virtually on August 10th, 2020 at 6 p.m. for our business meeting which will have additional updates to provide. We welcome our staff back on August 17th, 2020 for professional development and to prepare their classrooms for virtual learning. As I shared, our staff, minus any significant changes in the conditions uh, around COVID-19, will be delivering instruction from their classroom slash office, virtual office, and this will allow us to be fluid when we go to a hybrid schedule our teachers will be in place, the classrooms will be ready, and we can quickly move in that direction once health and safety measures will allow us to do so. We look forward to welcoming our students back virtually on August 31st, 2020. And last but certainly not least, I need to thank you for your continued and unwavering support during these difficult times. I really, truly, on behalf of the administration, the school board, the receiver, Dr. Samuels, thank you for just your continued support, patience, understanding with the school district during this very difficult time. None of us have ever had to deal with this situation. Uh, it is just complex. It is unnerving. It is concerning. But at the end of the day, health and safety must be the priority. We are very concerned because we understand in-person learning uh, is really the model we want to be implementing. We understand that there's going to be possible regression, learning loss, et cetera, and we're going to have to figure out a way 
to make up for that. But without health and safety of our staff and our employees, while all of that's important, health and safety has to be the number one priority in our decision-making process, even though it's very difficult uh, decisions that we have to make. So again, I wanna thank you. Um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. Uh, and again, we look forward to um, you know, feedback. Please be on the lookout for survey number three. Uh, please, again, feel free. We hope you can join us virtually on August 10th for our business meeting at 6 p.m. And again, we look forward to the continued partnership and really working together during these extremely difficult times. So again, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your patience. And again, I thank you for your understanding. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And we'll talk soon. Be safe and take care.